If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. In part A of this question, we are told that the base of the building is taken to be the origin of the coordinates. So down here, the lower right corner of the red colored building is going to be the origin of our coordinate system. And of course, we've labeled that 0, 0. And upwards is the positive y direction. And part A wants the initial coordinates of the ball. Now, we were told in the question that the building has a height y naught. So, starting at the origin, if we were to measure straight up a distance of y naught without changing our x coordinate, then this point right here where the ball is being tossed would have the coordinates of 0 comma y naught. And we don't actually have a value of the height of the building, at least not yet, so for now part A has to have an answer expressed in terms of y naught. So again, the initial coordinate will be 0, comma, y naught. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. We will move on to part B. And in part B, it asks, with the, pos ugh, with the positive x direction chosen to be out of the window, find the x and y components of the initial velocity. Well, most of us probably know that the initial velocity in the x direction is simply going to be the initial velocity multiplied by the cosine of the launch angle. Now we were told that the initial velocity with which this ball is thrown is 8 meters per second launched at an angle of 20 degrees. Where you could get into some trouble is simply and naively using 20 degrees as your angle. Let's recall however that when you measure an angle in mathematics and physics if the angle is measured in a clockwise fashion, like so, then the angle will actually have a negative value. Now, how do we know that it's clockwise? Well, because the ball is tossed below the horizontal. So below the horizontal would indicate that the velocity vector is pointing kind of down and to the right. So that would be a clockwise direction, and therefore the angle will actually be negative. And then we have this initial speed of 8 meters per second. So in the x direction we will proceed by taking the initial speed of 8 meters per second and then multiplying it by the cosine of negative 20 degrees. Make sure that your calculator is set to degree mode and then 8 multiplied by the cosine of negative 20 is about 7.52. So the initial velocity in the x direction will be 7.52 meters per second. And then we also need the initial y velocity, and it's a similar equation, we'll come over here. The initial y velocity will be the initial speed multiplied by the sine of the same angle. So we just have to switch our trig function. We'll do 8 meters per second multiplied by the sine of the negative 20 degree angle. And when we punch this into our calculators, we will end up with negative 2.74 meters per second. And so this would be the correct answer along with the other value for part B. We can move on to part C. And in part C, it says find the equations for the x and y components of the position as functions of time. Now we have written down the kinematics equations for the x direction as well as the y direction right here. And if we are going to be looking for the equations for the position as a function of time, it is probably most advantageous to use these two equations right here. So why don't we start with the x direction and copy this equation down below. So we now have delta x is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction multiplied by time plus one half times acceleration in the x direction times time squared. Now it is important to understand that in the x direction there is essentially no acceleration. And so we can say that ax is equal to zero meters per second squared. The reason for this, of course, is that gravity, which is the only force acting on the projectile as it flies through the air, is directed downward in the vertical direction. It is not directed, nor is any other force, in the horizontal direction. That makes the acceleration equal to zero. So this term right here, when you plug zero in for acceleration, will basically disappear. Now, another important note is that delta x can be expanded into x minus x naught 
equals the initial velocity in the x direction times time. Now, x naught would be the initial x coordinate. And you remember from part A that the initial x coordinate was zero. So this also drops out of the equation. And we are left with x is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction, which was 7.52 meters per second, multiplied by time. And so this would be the correct answer for the position as a function of time in the horizontal or x direction. We'll do the same for the y direction with the same equation. In fact, rather than writing out delta y, let's just go ahead and expand that to y minus y naught equals the initial velocity in the y direction times time plus one half times the acceleration in the y direction multiplied by time squared. Now, remember, y naught was the initial y coordinate of the projectile, and in part a, we didn't know that value, we just left it symbolized as y naught. So we have to leave that for now as y naught. But the initial velocity in the y direction, we figured that out earlier, that was this negative 2.74 meters per second. So we'll put that in correspondingly right here. Multiply that by time. We are going to run out of room here, so let's slide this over. There we go. Plus one half. Now, the acceleration in the y direction, as noted, is, is the acceleration due to gravity, and that has a value of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we'll multiply that by t squared. All we need to do now is simplify this. If you multiply 1 half by negative 9.8, you'll get negative 4.9 meters per second squared. Throw that in parentheses times time squared. We can leave this negative 2.74 meters per second in parentheses multiplied by time. And then what I think we should do is add this y naught over to the other side. So now we'll have y naught here and then actually just to clean that up a little bit it probably would make more sense to say minus and then parentheses like that and this will all equal y so this would be the final equation for the position in the vertical or y direction which means we can now move on to part d of this question so we'll scroll back up and in part d we are asked how far horizontally from the base of the building does the ball strike the ground well, in essence then, as the ball flies from its launch point down to here, maybe it explodes, I always like to assume things explode here, we're going to have some sort of final x coordinate over here. So this mark right here, that's going to be our x, that's what we're looking for. Note that it strikes the ground three seconds later, we are actually given the time value. So we're looking for that final x coordinate and conveniently we can use the equation that we developed earlier. So let's carry that down here for part D. We have x is equal to 7.52 meters per second multiplied by the time value that was given of three seconds. When we punch this into our calculators, we're going to get a final x coordinate of about 22.6. And that will now be in meters. In part E. It says, find the height from which the ball was thrown. That is the value of y naught. And so, we'll end up being able to use our other equation that we developed from part C of the question. Notice that when the ball strikes the ground over at this location, the final y coordinate is zero. It's at ground level now. And so we have to make sure we understand that we can plug zero in for that y, that final y coordinate. So we're going to take the equation that we developed earlier, and we're going to be plugging zero in for the y value. We don't know why not, that's what we're looking for. We have this 2.74, I'll drop the units now for clarity, multiplied by the time of three, and then minus the 4.9 times three squared. Don't forget to square that time value. So over here, we can punch all that into our calculator. So basically negative 2.74 times three minus 4.9 times three squared. So now we have, oops, zero equals y naught minus 52.32. This should be in meters. And then to actually solve for y naught, we'll just add 52.32 to both sides. 
And of course, we can see that Y0, or the height of the building, was 52.32 meters. This brings us, finally, to part F. How long does it take the ball to reach a point 10 meters below the level of launching? 10 meters below the level of launching. So we just figured out that up here, we essentially have a Y coordinate of 52.32. That was the height of the building. But now they want to know how long is it going to take for the ball to basically reach, well, let's read it one more time, 10 meters below the level of launching. Oh, so 10 meters below the level. We'd have to drop down 10 meters to about here. So what you want to do is subtract 10 from the 52.32 and then mark a line right here. That's going to be 42.32 meters. So the ball would be about right there. And therefore, the final Y coordinate in this part of the question is going to be 42.32 and then the initial y coordinate is the 52.32. And so, it will turn out to perhaps be best. There's a couple of ways we could approach this, but I think it's going to be easier if we use this equation first to find the final y velocity and then move up and use this other equation to solve for the time. If you try to use this equation, which is possible, you'll end up having to do the quadratic formula, and we probably want to avoid that. So. Let's, again, use this equation that we've just circled, and we'll get the value for Vy. So we'll come over here to part F. Vy squared was equal to V initial Y squared plus 2 times the acceleration. And they probably have written this. No, they just wrote it as delta Y. I'm going to expand delta Y and do the final Y minus the initial Y. And so now we'll just start plugging in the known values. Let's see, the initial velocity in the y direction that has escaped me, it was the negative 2.74. Negative 2.74 meters per second, don't forget to square that, plus 2 times the negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The final y coordinate was that 42.32, the initial y coordinate was the 52.32. Let's punch all that into our calculators and see what we come up with. So we have this Vy squared is equal to 203.5 roughly and then square root both sides. And we'll come over here and report the answer. Now be careful here because your calculator is going to return a positive value. But remember, the ball is traveling downward. So you have to insert a negative sign in front of this final Y velocity. So this is your final y velocity. We turn to the other equation in the y direction of kinematics. It says the final y velocity is equal to the initial y velocity plus acceleration in the y direction times time. We want to solve this for time. So let's subtract the initial velocity over to the other side. And then we'll divide both sides by the acceleration. That will cancel it out on the right-hand side. And then we just plug in our values. So we have this negative 14. 0.3 meters per second minus the initial velocity in the y direction, which was the negative 2.74 meters per second, and then divide that by the acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. This, finally, will give us that time value. And when we crunch this all down, we're going to get 1.18 seconds approximately. So this would be the correct answer to the final part of the question.